Hey everyone, I'm Matt Dolan with Dolan Divorce Lawyers in Connecticut. And today what I'm going to talk about is the residual hearsay exception. So I've done other videos and I would direct your attention to those that describe what hearsay is and what the general exceptions are to the hearsay or the rule against hearsay, um, you know, in various circumstances, whether the witness has to be available for the hearsay exception to come in, whether they have to be unavailable, whether it doesn't matter, et cetera. So showing you the uh, residual exception, I will share my screen. So it's code of evidence section 8.9, which says that a statement is not admissible under, or a statement that is not admissible under, under any of the foregoing exceptions is admissible if the court determines that there is a reasonable necessity for the admission of the statement and the statement is supported by equivalent guarantees of trustworthiness and reliability that are essential to other evidence admitted under traditional exceptions to the hearsay rule. So it's not super well defined within, um, you know, within the actual uh, code of evidence section, like, you know, this is kind of generic language that you could argue that many different things fit into. But I'll give you a couple of the most common examples of what fall into the residual hearsay exception rule. So again, just briefly, hearsay is an out of court statement that is offered to prove the truth of the matter that is it to prove the truth of that statement. So one common example er, that could fall under the residual exception are statements of children. So obviously you're not going to have a child testify in court, um, but you know, in a hearing between parents, you might want to you know, try to get in statements of a child that, you know, dad hits me or, or, you know, uh, you know, who knows what a child, you know, what a child could say, you might want to get it in under the residual exception. So a, a statement of a child is considered hearsay. If, you know, if, for example, a child says, you know, dad hits me, that is an out of court statement that, you know, if the wife is, you know, trying to present that, they're trying to present that out of court statement to prove the truth of the matter to prove the truth of what the child stated. So you're offering that to prove that yes, in fact, dad does hit the child. So it would not be, you know, it would not fall under any of the hearsay exceptions. So, you know, it's not necessarily in the court's interest to have children testify in court. Um, so you could argue that it should fall under the residual exception. So there's a reasonable necessity for the admission of the statement. So, you know, it's important to have statements of children admissible into court. And the statement is supported by equivalent guarantees of trustworthiness and reliability that are essential to other evidence admitted under traditional exceptions to the hearsay rule. So, you know, this is, you know, you'll have to basically come up with an argument as to why the statement is supported by, you know, why there are guarantees of trustworthiness and reliability. You know, one could be what's, you know, mom doesn't have any incentive to lie. You know, she, you know, wants what's best for her child. And, you know, she has no reason to lie if that, you know, is in fact the case. You know, a judge could come back and say, well, you have every reason to lie because, you know, by making an accusation like that, that a child said that you're, getting a leg up on custody. But, you know, oftentimes judges will allow, you know, statements of children into evidence under the residual exception. Another example are like bank records. Um, you know, obviously that's very different than statements of children, but bank records, you know, technically they are admiss admissible under the, um, you know, business records exception where they're kept in the usual course of business. Um, however, technically, you're supposed to have somebody authenticate them. So if somebody from the bank say, yes, we do, usually, you know, we keep these records in the usual course of business. It's, you know, not really practical to have somebody from the bank testifying to the validity of bank statements. So courts will, you know, usually other lawyers won't even object to bank records coming in. But if they do, you could argue that the 
bank records should come in as they're reasonable. There's a reasonable necessity for the admission of those statements. You know, it's important to have bank records come into evidence when financial issues are in dispute and the statement is supported by equivalent guarantees of trustworthiness and reliability. So, you know, it looks like a valid bank statement. It's probably not forged. And, you know, both parties would have had an opportunity to review those records and, you know, potentially subpoena them directly from the bank to authenticate the validity of the bank records. So that's another example of what falls into the residual exception. So, you know, basically, you know, it's a, it's a pretty limited situation, which a court is going to allow evidence in under this exception. Those are a couple of examples, but you know, if you're trying to get something into evidence, that's your last resort, trying to get it in under section 8.9 the residual exception. So as usual, if you have any other questions, feel free to give our office a call at any time.